babe, welcome to HGDC, HD Designs Crochet, the creator of the wearable modern granny square garments and also the producer of a mini course taking you from crochet hobbyist all the way to crochet designer or knitwear designer. Um, today I have a vlog planned for you that has been requested numerous times and that is in various formats of how do I make that bank, how do I make that dollar, how do I make that money to pay for my crochet, how do I make my crochet pay for itself, how do I make yarn money, get that income girl, get it, get it, get it. And so I have a list of 10 ways that you can create income from your crochet or your knitwear. I'm going to refer to crochet but if you prefer to knit just put knit instead of crochet every time you hear me say it and so I've got my list here because I'm professional <laughs> why did you just do that uh, there's a few terms that I'm going to run through before I go through the 10 items on my list and that is because the aim is to have a mix of different streams of income from your crochet to rely on and the reason being is because if something happens to one stream and it dies down a little bit you've got another one that you can ramp up and that means you've always got a steady, a steady, a steady stream of income coming through to you. Now the terms are passive and active income and I'm going to define those really simply for you. Passive income, active income. So when you've got active income, that means you're actively giving your time and your presence into making that money, such as teaching. Whereas passive income, you don't need you don't need to be there. You do not need to show up. Um, you could be asleep and you will still get those sale notifications and there's nothing you need to do. It's best to have a mix of the two because one, there are a limited amount of hours per day. Everybody has 24 hours a day and if you are working for an hourly rate then there's only a limited amount of ways that you can increase that to make sure that you're getting an income coming in and then on top of that if something happens, if you are unable to work for a little bit, your circumstances change or anything like that or with the virus raging and you can't be um, going to a day job or you can't physically be somewhere then that also limits the income coming in whereas on passive income if you don't need to physically be there then that can always keep generating money for you so it's definitely a good idea a very good strategy to have a mix of the two incomes um, so bear that in mind the other thing to bear in mind is Yes, the main aim is to make bank, to make dollar, to have physical money put into your bank account for the work that you do. But some of the perks on my list, you don't necessarily get outright money, you might get yarn support, you might get free patterns and other perks. Um, they have a cash equivalent, you would be buying yarn and you would be buying patterns if they weren't gifted to you or given to you in this transaction. So if you want cash money then you need to go for one of the cash money options whereas if you want to make money for yarn then you might choose an option where you're given yarn so again bear that in mind so 10 ways to make income from your crochet the first one I'm going to go in with is teaching it's like an obvious one that I think most people have considered at some point it's an active form um, usually, I'm going to go into that, it's usually active in that you will have a course, you might have five people um, that all come to a yarn shop, a local yarn shop or your home or wherever and you would teach them for 40 minutes to an hour how to crochet and you might form workshops around that and so that is active because you are actively participating in that teaching. Um, you could set it up so that you have classes that are virtual but I'm going to leave that for another category so I'm just on about that active element right now. 
there are so many different ways that you could host a um, teaching course. You could, as I said, do it in a bricks and mortar shop. You could do it at your home. Um, depending on where you are right now as well, because I am going to bring in the, the factor of coronavirus because it is impacting on the way that we do our jobs, our day jobs, our hobbies, and um, you might want to consider ways that you can evolve these different things on my list so that you can carry on making an income. So in terms of teaching, you might need a smaller group because of the virus or you might have to be more spaced out or you might choose to do it um, virtually on like rather than pre-recorded live so you're still putting your active time in on Zoom. Um, so for example, you could you could market yourself as a crochet teacher and all you need to do to be able to do that is to be able to crochet and to be able to teach people. So I think the majority of us could do that. You can advertise a Zoom workshop. You could say it's gonna be a maximum of 10 people. It's an hour and it's eight pound. And ka-ching, you've got 80 quid if you fill all of those spots. And a lot of people at the moment are looking for hobbies because they can't go out. There's no clubbing. The pubs are really restricted. In the UK, we can't go to the cinema. Like life's different now so people are looking for these hobbies so i think you definitely market um your courses and zoom's a really good option there isn't really any cost in there um you might need to sign up to zoom if you wanted to do hour sessions but you could do 40 minute sessions for free so there's very minimal outgoings but you might already have a zoom account that you can use so number one is teach people how to crochet. You can then expand on that by not only doing the beginners but you can then go on to do different workshops. Um, I know that The Secret Crocheter, she does um, teach classes and she also has workshops so people will say I'm a beginner, I want to learn and you might teach them how to make the granny square and then you'll expand and you'll do an advanced beginner course where you might teach them different um, stitches so they can edge their blankets you might teach them how to make a crochet sock there's so many different possibilities out there and different ways and you can then make the um, workshop into separate sessions so you can say learn to make a crochet sock and it's going to be four sessions it's eight pound for each session and then there's going to be ten people on each one and you've gone from eight, making eight quid to suddenly four times that amount and you've got the pre-booked slots so that's great. So I know a lot of you now are going to be thinking, hmm, let me start a course. And the great thing about that is, is there are so many people out there that want to learn. And if you are limiting the courses, which I think is a good idea, so there's not too many people on there, you can give more individual time. If you're going to teach 10 people at a time, that means all of us right now watching this video could set up courses and still and still slay with the amount of money that we bring in because there's a huge population out there there's billions of people so there's always somebody to do your course number two is to sell what you produce and again i think this is a really popular option for people um, I see a lot of crocheters out there that produce products, items, and they sell them. Now, um, I'm thinking of some popular ones would be um, Realm Designs, and I'll put a couple of other ones down on the screen for you so you can go and have a look. Not so you can copy their items, but just so you can see that it is possible. I'm going to say that this one, again, has pros and cons. The pros are you can work for yourself, you can put your own designs out there, you can produce um, a batch of items and then you can drop them in a sale, like um, you can do a great big this is my next shop update and then you can generate a hype over it, um, you can do market stores, you could maybe find, you could do a little pop up shop in a bigger boutique somewhere, there's so many possibilities. And then on the cons side, again, it's very active and it's time intensive. You need to make 
every single item that you sell. So great, you can sell beanies and make a profit of five pounds, but you're gonna need to sell 40 of them to cover your basic outgoings or whatever. And so you need to be able to batch make 40 beanies. And so for me, the cons are, you're gonna have to repeatedly make the same object, which some people don't like to do. And it's time intensive in that you need to make those items. If you don't make them, you can't sell them. Um, I know that you can make quite a bit of money out of this and I would definitely suggest that it would be a way to start having a little bit of a crochet income. So along with number two, which is make your designs, I'm gonna also put in their commissions because they're, they're kind of similar. Rather than um, making a bulk amount to sell or taking orders and on your online shop or wherever and making them to ship out you could take on commissions and I have done this quite a few times and um, you will have somebody say to you can you make me a baby blanket for a christening or can you make me a baby shower gift can you make me um, you know and there's so many possibilities out there of like the baby outfits, you know, when they have their newborn photo shoots, there's so many different things out there that you could make and a lot of people want handmade items but they just, either they can't make them themselves or they don't want to invest the time to make them and so you can take a commission from somebody to make them and again they've got pros and cons. The pros are you're being paid to crochet which is great. The cons are you might not necessarily want to make it or it might not be in colours that you really enjoy. Now there's a few blanket makers out there and again I will list whoever I can remember on the screen. Um, they make blankets that they like and they post the process and then they sell them. And there's also a knitwear designer that does the same. She would make the, the garment and then say it's done it's ready for sale. So you could do that hybrid approach as well. Um, and definitely taking commissions means that you're usually guaranteed money. To protect yourself, I would definitely ask for half upfront and that way, whatever yarn you buy, you're not making a loss on. And if you then, if the person that's bought it um, doesn't pay up the rest, then you've not made a total loss. And I would also make it very clear, like I would send them an email um, with a quote and I would say half up front and if you don't pay um, after four days of it being finished then you get like a warning email and if you don't come and collect it by that point or arrange the final payment then I reserve the right to sell it on and they don't get a refund on the money that they have paid because that stops people messing you around um, you need to make sure that this money is as guaranteed as possible and you don't want to be putting in all that time to not see anything out of it and that's what you're here for you're here to make your crochet pay for your lifestyle and your upkeep okay number three following on from commissions is a slightly different type of commission and that is submissions um, so this is where you apply to a magazine such as crochet now or um, whatever else that you like to read inside crochet and you submit a design and they pay you for your design to be featured and again pros and cons for you I got your back the pros of this are some of the magazines pay you up to 240 pounds for a design now it's based on the complexity and the time spent on making it so you could definitely get a lump sum of money from making it also after six months or four to six months it depends the rights revert back to you which means you can then sell the pattern yourself you also get an exposure because you're in a great big magazine and people are seeing you and that's definitely how i found some of my favorite makers is by seeing them in a magazine and then finding them on social media so that is great the cons of submitting to a magazine are um they are themed, so the magazines work three to four months in advance and they will send out um, calls for you to sign up. You can go on the websites and you can find the submission um, email and you can register your interest and then when they've got um, 
like the guidelines for another issue coming out, they'll email it to you and they'll say, do you want to join in? And I've done this on a magazine and they emailed me out the details and then they had the different themes, which I'm not gonna share because the magazines aren't out yet. And I had a really good look and they were really good in that they'd sent a private Pinterest board so I could really see what they were going for. And I decided it wasn't right for me because wasn't really my aesthetic, my theme. And I can definitely say one of the cons of being in a magazine is that sometimes you might sort of sell out on your own um, brand or aesthetic because you want to fit in with what they're making. Not in a bad way, you could also see it as a pro that it's testing you and really expanding you, but I know what I want my brand to look like. And so I want like the granny square to be a heavy feature. And so I didn't really want to then work on a design that wasn't really true to what HDDC is. So you really need to bear that in mind. You don't want to just show up with work just for the sake of showing up. You want it to be a really true reflection of your brand and your brand values and your aesthetic. And the other con of this is the sales side. So great, you're getting loads of exposure and you can sell it after four to six months, but you might not make as many sales as opposed to if you was to sell the pattern in your own esteem outright as an indie designer. Um, yes, there's more eyes on it if it's in a magazine, arguably, but you're not seeing the profit from that. Um, whereas if you publish it yourself, you would see the full amount of money that comes in minus your overhead, which I would go into. So you can definitely do magazine subscriptions, um, but you need to consider if that's right for you and which ones you want to feature in and if you've got the time to reach the deadline because you have to reach the deadline. So moving on to tip number four, and that is, um, and now I'm moving more into the money, not so much money, but the perks before I go back onto the big money makers. Um, so you could become a yarn ambassador. Now this isn't for everyone, but there are people out there and brands out there that need ambassadors. So for example, Rosina of um, Zines and Rogers and Sandra Cherryheart of um, Sandra Cherryheart, <laughs> Sandra Paul of Sandra Cherryheart. They are yarn ambassadors. Sandra is for Stylecraft as is Lucy of Attic24, Rosina is with King Cole, and there are so many different brands out there with so many different ambassadors. So you could most certainly tootle on over to a um, yarn brand and you can ask them if you could be a ambassador. I know Hobbycraft have them as well. Um, Lindsay Nunes of Lottie and Albert was one for a while. Um, Paintbox have definitely got ambassadors, so you can apply to be one. Now, this isn't for everyone. One, because there's a finite amount of ambassadors that companies want and need. And two, because you do need to be more an influencer to be a yarn ambassador. You need to have a following of some sort. You could be nano, micro, but you need to have a following. So you need to have a really strong social media presence. It doesn't hurt to have either a blog and or a YouTube channel to go with it because the yarn brands want as much bang for their book from what they're sending you and they want to have as many people see it as possible. Um, so you need to really consider whether you are likely to be selected. I mean, by all means, go and try because you might be surprised, um, but they are gonna have some sort of tick list that they're gonna want you to meet before they consider you. Um, the pros, if you are made into a yarn ambassador, is you get sent free yarn, like bagger amounts of yarn, lots of yarn. Um, and also you then get access to their new products before they come out. Like I always used to see Lindsay of Lottie and Albert and she would say this is the new yarn that's coming out and so I'm gonna make this pattern with it. And I mean, free yarn, that's the goal. I know it is for so many of us, that's the goal. 
Um, so you can most definitely try that. If being a yarn ambassador isn't a possible for you or it's not something you want to take on, you could also apply for yarn support with brands. Um, so lots of different brands out there will ask you to submit your patterns and in response in yeah in response they'll give you the yarn to make it it's a win-win all round because they can showcase their yarn and then you can showcase your patterns and you can um market each other and it's mutual so that is another way um you're not a full-on yarn ambassador but you are being ambassador of that yarn for that particular pattern um i see this a lot with um Lage of um i'll put hers on the screen she quite often is sent yarn and then she'll make a pattern out of it and that's great because if you want to make your patterns and you're getting yarn then your overheads are less so definitely consider that as well number five kind of links into um the yarn support and that is you could become a test knitter or crocheter we hear the term test knitting more frequently but there are test crocheters out there now again pros and cons this is an active form of income it um relies on your time so test crocheters or knitters testers basically test the pattern they get it before it's released and then they make the pattern and they see if there's any errors in making it up any errors in the pattern and they give all of that feedback to the designer and then um, the designer knows that their pattern is a goer before they release it to the general public now again pros and cons there are numerous the pros are you get experience because you are trying new patterns, you get exposure because the designer is going to use your pictures and blast you all over their social media. Um, you also get an experience in new ways of garment construction that you might not necessarily consider. You're getting a pattern for free because you've been sent a pattern to test and if you complete it you are usually sent out the um, final version that's released to the public as well. There's always um, other perks as well, so for my uh, testers I also give them a free pattern of their choice on top of the one that they've tested for me and then I give them a discount code for life as well because that's the minimum, like the bare minimum that I can do for them right now. Eventually I want to be able to offer yarn support now this is where um, you send them the yarn or the money equivalent so they can get the yarn to make their pattern. And again, if you want to do this so that you can pay for your yarn, for your pattern, so your hobby's not costing you, as opposed to actively um, generating an income, this is a great thing for you to do. It's easy enough to become a tester. You just need to go along to that person, the designer's social media, um, they will either have groups somewhere or a website or information you can comment on a picture when they post and say I'd like to test you can drop them an email there's so many different ways you just need to look at that particular designer and try and fathom out the best way for me I have a sign up on my website hgdesigntocrochet.co.uk you fill in the information then you go in my database and then once a pattern is ready to be tested I ask my tribe stars if they want to test it and then I go to my um, tester list and then if I've got any more slots I take it to social media and then I would just email around to the testers who wants to do this it's usually first come first serve basis and then they test my pattern and yeah I can't thank my testers enough for being amazing and eventually when I can I will be offering yarn support because it's the very minimum I can do for these wonderful wonderful people who are in effect my brand ambassadors because they've taken the time to try out and make my products and then blast it all over social media and I can't thank them enough because I get that relief that I know that the patterns work and um, it's also great for when you're selling a pattern because you can go and look at the hashtag and see so many different versions of the same pattern. So you can sign up to be a tester for me and for other designers and get the perks that go along with it. 
Um, I'd say the cons are you might not necessarily get cash money for it. It's not really going to ever be a way that you can pay your bills. It's more just a perk of like an add-on to enjoying crochet and it's time intensive but I mean if you were going to make revival or promise or something for yourself you may as well sign up to be a tester because like you're getting benefits from doing it as well. Um, which takes me into number six. Hey tribe, it's Editing Heather here. I'm interrupting myself just to say that although it is 10 ways to make an income from crochet, I'm splitting it into two videos so that you get all that good stuff in a manageable size. So this is part one and part two is coming soon. So make sure you look out for it and thank you so much for watching. Take care tribe, see you soon.